You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, God damn it! Get the point good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody. And guess what? This is Grammy Mary, and I am uh, chronologically challenged. Is that that a good way to put that? I thought it was Friday already. But it's just a wacka 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 doodle Wednesday. <laughs> That's what I get for, oh man, the days have just been running together. And it's just, and it's been so soggy for so long out here that, oy. And I finally got a chance to go outside and it's too soggy to really work in the yard. So I cleaned the garage. Oy, I'm tired. I'm going to need a soak when I get done here. <laughs> I've been busting my butt, let me tell you. Uh, let me see. Oh, wackadoodle Wednesday. Let me make sure I got everything. Okay, that's all. Ooh, I need to do that one. I got to adjust my volumes on different things. Because if I don't, then I'll be getting gadunkers from all over God's green earth. And yeah. Hmm, you ready, Furtis? Furtis. Who's Furtis? I have no idea who Furtis is. Can you hear me? I don't know. I can hear you. Run- <laughs> Rob's running away. <laughs> Oh my goodness, y'all are just too funny. Okay, over here on Twitter, thank you, Barman, for letting everybody know that I am live and in poison. I also see Gary L. Thank you, Gary, for retweeting it as well. And uh, yeah, it's, mm, phew. <laughs> it's one of those days, I got to tell you. Huh, I think I'm becoming more and more like my mother every day. That should scare a lot of you. <laughs> Okay, let me go see who's over here in In the Matrix. Um, I see Robin Birds is posting right now. So is Pseudonym. And yeah, Pseudonym is posting a lot. And Andrew and Truth Seeker and Jackie Canella. Lots and lots of people over here posting right now. Hi there, everybody over there. Over here on Freedoms Network. Thank you once again, Grimmy, for letting everybody over here know that I am live and in person. Let me see who else is on right now. I think it's just me, although the lovely Estrella has been posting like crazy again. Bless your heart, Estrella. Keep it up, girlfriend. Grimmy was here as well as Loki Luck and Cowboy as well. So, yeah. Uh, da 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 that's Freedoms Network. Let me go. I, I had to redo all of my tabs, and so I'm kind of sort of fee-buttled. Over here on Fakie Book. Hi, Catherine. How are you, sweetheart? And Lisa B., how are you doing? And yeah, there's Dernators down in Oklahoma again. Holy carp. Holy carp. And my youngest daughter, she's, yeah, she's not having a good day. Um, <clears throat> Yeah. Buy a house, they said. It'll be fun, they said. <laughs> That's what they said. Yeah, she just found out that they got to replace their foundation. Not going to be cheap. Not at all. Oh, well. So, uh, let's see. What else is going on over here? Not a whole heck of a lot that I can see. So, moving over here to realliberty.org. Thank you again, Grimner, for letting everybody over here know that I am live and in person. I also see Flash Somebody is online, as well as Rob Woikes. Hey there, hi there, ho there, guys. How you doing? And over here on Minds, there's Conserve Truth and Nobody. And Nobody, yeah, that circle of diversity. Mm-hmm, pretty much. I'll just go ahead and share this link over in the chit-chat so y'all can see. Because, yeah, that's pretty much what, yeah pretty much what it is okay and now back to okay 
I'm thank you, Grimmy. I'm sure you shared over here as well to let everybody know that yeah, I'm here. And man, the safety harness of the year is a good one too. Y'all need to be members of Mines. Go over there and check it out. Really pretty cool. Okay, now. The place where you need to be if you are wanting to give me some static while I'm broadcasting. By the way, if you are listening on the Spreaker link, uh, come on over to reallibertymedia.com. Think of a nickname, join the chat, give me some static, and I'll give it back. And maybe, just maybe, everybody else will kind of go, yee-haw, as well. So, um, yeah. In any case, pigs are flying. Holy mackinoli. Can you imagine the size of them wings? Get them bad boys up. Unless they're little big piglets. In any case, over here in the RLM chat, right up top, I see Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. Closely followed by Beetle. How you doing, Beetle? Hope you're having an absolutely splendiferous day with Pippi. Oh, and Pippi is there as well. Yay, Pippi. Okay, Grimner is also here, the RLM god, don't you know, who, who just had to remind me that, um, yeah. <laughs> it's not Friday. <laughs> it's Wednesday. <laughs> Thanks, Grim, for keeping me honest. And, yeah, pointing out my faux pas. Because I, I do a lot of them. You guys just don't get to hear many of them. But, yeah, I do my share. I also see the lovely Moose Goyle is here. And, Moosey, thank you ever so much for that post you put on my Facebook page. That is just too freaking funny. Yeah. Uh, let me... I tell you what, I'll just go over there and, and see if I can. Did you know that those red solo cups, all of those little lines on the red solo cups are different measurements? I didn't know that either. It's like totally, totally cool. Yeah, Grandma hears you like beer and Grandma makes beer stein socks. I may have to see if I can find a knitting pattern to do that. I have a son-in-law that would probably wear those. In any case... Back to saying, hey, uh, DC is here. Hi, Don. How are you doing, hun? As well as Asmodeus Asmo. And looky there, we got some Chalcedony in the chat, as well as Free Enslaved. Hi there, Free. I'm here, as well as I be Don C. Meister Bra, how you doing, hun? How's things out in the desert? I also see the lovely Miss Kate is here. Hey, Kate, how are you doing, sweetie? And Rob Works, who fired up that bubbler. Booyah! Thank you, Rob. Rome's is also here, as well as the lovely Vanna White. Yeah, it's a po Foss too, Gary L. <laughs> I, I have a tendency to get my turds wormed around and get uh, calendarly calendarly challenge there you go calendarly challenge that's a good way of putting that pofaz two in any case where am i at <laughs> hi vanna white i also see vinny terry and vinny are you a vinny Ter vinny you do realize you know like vegetarians they only eat veggies let's not go there um weather dork is also here <laughs> as well as z beth z and phantom that wonderful young man that did my intro for me thank you once again phantom and well then is here hey there darling how are you doing this evening cyborg noodle may you be touched by that cyborgian noodliness dakota hi dakota i hope you're not getting hit with the snow like colorado's getting hit with snow my dot my oldest daughter posted yesterday actually she sent me some pictures from work it's like holy carp i mean it's the middle of may and they're getting snow out there or closer to the end of may and they're getting snow again out there somebody really needs to quit dodging with you know quit ticking off mother nature because man she gets you she really will. She she don't have a problem with it. She don't need us. We need her. Just saying. Also, uh, Flash somebody is logged in. Hey, Flash Rooney, how you doing, hun? As well as Frumpy and Garyel. Hi, Garyel. Long time no see in the chitty chat. Wonderful to see you here. Gooberzilla is here. Hey, Goober. Vinny, I'm not, no, Vinny. <laughs> Ain't gonna happen, hon. Um, I'm reading the chat. Let's see. Gromit is also here, as well as Java, 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 Java Doctor 2. We also got some JJ's, no, 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 JJ's in the chit chat. Hey, JJ's, I saw you was gonna be doing radio today, but I've been outside most of the day. So, 
Sorry if I missed it, hun. Kiss is here as well as kiss underscore because we got to have a double dose of kissing going on. <laughs> I also see a ponder gander here. That's Vinny Incognito. Not very incognito, Vinny. We all know who you are. I also see Sock Puppet. Hi, Sock. How you doing? As well as Smodhaz. Smodhaz. Smodhaz what? Hmm? We also got some Vanna White underscore and some Vanna Whitey going on. Holy crap and holy Vanna. My goodness, child. You're just all over the place, hon. Also, over here in the red pill, let's see who's not in the RLM chat. I see Apostle is here, as well as F. Canella and Juana Taco and KD Troxel and Quantum Cupcake and Ventures is also over here. So, hi, everybody. How you doing? Um, I am going to go to something because, you know, I, <sighs> I'm just really tired of politics. I don't know if y'all know that or have noticed that, but I'm just really tired of politics. And so I just haven't been going there a whole hell of a lot. But I did see this. I don't remember if I saw it on Twitter or if it was something that Larry Woods shared over on Fakey Book, because Larry Woods has been sharing some amazing stuff as well. Um, let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Let me scroll down and see if I can find if he if he'd done that or not real quick because I really do want to give props to whoever posts things that I snag onto and uh, da, da. oh man I'm just gonna have to scroll and scroll and scroll and oh well Larry I think it was you but I'm not for positive and for sure so um, it was posted in naturalnews.com May of 2016 so, been around a while. It has been confirmed that cancer is entirely a man-made dis-ease. Oh, I do remember. It wasn't Larry. It was over on Twitter. And it was... Let me find it. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Debt Slave. That's right. Debt Slave is the one that posted this. So, in any case, back to this. This is from naturalnews.com. Now, I know it may be hard to believe, but a recent study shows that cancer is 100% a man made disease, or dis ease, as I prefer to call it. And that is. <clears throat> and that it is caused by modern day phenomena like pollution and dietary intake. Now, researchers at the University of Manchester KNH Center for Biomedical Egyptology in England, wow, that's a dumb hinger of a name, they reached that conclusion in 2010 after reviewing remains and literature from ancient Egypt and Greece, as well as earlier periods, to study that or it's a study that also included the first historical diagnosis of cancer in Egyptian mummy. Now, <clears throat> this is all going on if you actually believe what we have been taught in his story. I'm putting a lot of hyphens in there. You know, remember how I used to say we need to just stamp out hyphens? Like with African American and Mexican American and Hispanic American and, and whatever American, whatever, whatever, whatever. What do they call them over in Europe? I'm sure they don't call them African Americans in Europe. In any case, there are times when hyphens are appropriate. And I think this is one of those times because it's no longer really his history. It's his story. And man, oh man... Um, what's his name over on um, YouTube? Um, <laughs> see, now I'm going to have to go and click on that as well. Um, hmm, just a minute. See, it would help if I would be prepared, wouldn't it? <laughs> but I was, I was having issues with, you know, even getting... Oh, hey, I'm still logged in. So, um, I'm going to go to my history. And I listened to an awful lot of Jordan Peterson today while I was puttering around inside the house. And that was an excellent, 
excellent um, talk that he gave as well, or lecture, or whatever you want to call it. Um, not Serial Brain. Observation Deck. There you go. Go check out Observation Deck. He's been doing an awful lot lately on history and, you know, fact-checking, basically, and calling BS on an awful lot of it. Um... I'll just go ahead and and share the latest one that I've watched over here. And it really, yeah, pretty interesting. This guy is, I am Lame Frog. Well, hi there, I am Lame Frog. How are you doing? Popped in here while I was jibber-jabbering. In any case, I'm, I'm thinking, um, what is that, Grim? Oh, black folks would work too. Yeah, well, you know, they are people. They're individuals. And it's just, it's this crazy hyphenization stuff on something that's an immutable trait. And you don't have to be from Africa to have dark skin. You know, that's another one to throw out there. <sighs> and I still find it just odd that these people that, that, you know, think they're better because they are born with lighter or with less pigmentation or lighter skin tone and yet in the summertime they go out and lay on the beach and try and turn their skin into leather what's the deal pickle i don't get it in any case back to this article <laughs> squirrel it is a wackadoodle wednesday um now the study published at the time in the journal of nature reviews cancer noted that researchers found only one occurrence of cancer while investigating hundreds of egyptian mummies in addition they found very few references to the disease in period literature excuse me hiccup which indicates that cancer cases were extremely rare during the period However, after the Industrial Revolution, cancer rates exploded, and in particular among children, which proves that the rise in cases is not exclusively tied to longer life. And if you actually look at the Industrial Revolution and you look at some of the mud flood stuff that's coming out, and um, um, Victor Fomenko, I think that's his name, over in Russia, who's got a very good series on um, false history and fact checking and calling BS on the history that we have been sold, the his story that we've been sold. Um, and then you start looking at, oh, like orphan trains and foundlings. And you look in that time period around the Industrial Revolution and all of the foundlings and all of the orphanages that were overflowing you know, in the 1700s and 1800s? Dude, seriously, when you start connecting some dots, it makes you go, huh. And I wonder, I wonder, you know, if a bunch of children were getting cancer, I wonder if maybe what happened that caused the reset, wandering off on a tangent again. Yes, I see my little cursor flashing. Um, Lame, oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, Lone Frog. <laughs> Can I just go back to bed and start this over again? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. <clears throat> um... Oh, goody, goody, goody. Okay. Now, back to, and there has been an increase in skin cancer, but the increases in skin cancer actually are uh, very closely correlated to the in, um, increase in sunblock. Yeah. Start looking up that stuff. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lone Frog. Holy smokes. I'm, Yeah. <laughs> see you get what you pay for and y'all ain't paying for this so there you go in any case <laughs> back to this stupid article actually it's an intelligent article it's the person that's reading it that's having issues in any case um in industrialized society cancer is second only to cardiovascular disease as a cause of death 
but in ancient times it was extremely rare. This is according to Professor Rosalind David of the Faculty of Life Sciences. And there is nothing in the natural environment that can cause cancer. So it has to be a man-made dis-ease down to population and changes in our diet and lifestyle. Now the important thing about our study is that it gives a historical perspective to this dis-ease and um, we can make very clear statements on the cancer rates in societies because we have a full overview. We've looked at millennia, not 100 years, and have masses of data. Now I am going to put this out there just because I think the only reason why nobody caught on to this little um, his story debacle is because there is just enough facts, just enough truth sprinkled throughout it to where people don't go totally, I call bullshit. Because your bullshitometer will go off like crazy if someone tells you a bald faced lie. Period. I mean, there, I don't know of very many people that, that cannot recognize a bald face lie. But, as opposed to a bearded face lie. I've never heard of a bearded face lie, but maybe there are some. In any case, back to this. The research includes the first ever histological diagnosis of cancer in an Egyptian mummy, which was made by Professor Michael Zimmerman, a visiting scholar at the KNH Center, who is based in Villanova University near Philadelphia. And he managed to diagnose rect rectal cancer in an unidentified mummy, an ordinary person who lived in Doc... Doc... Yeah... <laughs> It was an oasis, and it was during the um, Ptolemaic period, or 200 to 400 AD. Now, in an ancient society lacking surgical intervention, evidence of cancer should remain in all cases. And the virtual absence of malignancies in mummies must be interpreted as indicating their rarity in antiquity indicating that cancer-causing factors are limited to societies affected by modern industrialization, according to Zimmerman. Now, the research team examined mummified remains, blah, 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 as well as literary documentation and evidence for ancient Egypt, but only literary evidence from ancient Greece because there are no known human remains from this period. Ah, which makes one wonder, was Greece and the whole Grecian thing made up by a bunch of monks? Seriously, do some research, peeps. It's really, it makes you go, hmm. Now, the team also looked at medical studies of animal and human remains from earlier periods extending all the way back to the age of dinosaurs. Now, a short lifespan is not a factor. Overall, evidence of cancer in early humans and animal fossils, as well as non-human primates, is extremely rare. There are only a few dozen examples of animal fossils though these are mostly disputed. However, there has been a meta uh, yeah, metastic cancer discovery of unknown primary origin in the Edmont Edmontosaurus fossil. Edmontosaurus. Why do you guys give them such weird names? Good Lord, give them a name that people can pronounce, like Ralphosaurus or something like that, you know? Well, in any case, this was while a separate study lists several possible neoplasms, new and abnormal growths of tissue in some parts of the body, especially as a characteristic of cancer in fossil remains. Now, some scientists and medical researchers have suggested that the rare incidence of cancer in antiquity was due to, in large part to short lifespans. While this st statistical construct is accurate. Humans in ancient Egypt did not develop other conditions that primarily affect young persons. Now another explanation for the lack of cancerous tumors in ancient time is that tumors possibly are not well preserved. 
Zimmerman has performed some experimental studies indicating that mummification actually preserves the features of the malignancies and thus tumors should actually be more well preserved than normal tissue. Still, through hundreds of mummies from around the world, there are still only two publications showing microscopic confirmation of cancer. Radiological exams of mummies from the Cairo Museum have also failed to show evidence of cancer. So, it does not surprise me one wee little bit that this is a man-made disease, much like, you know, this whole, um, <laughs> yes, Grim, the Ralphosaurus was the puking dinosaur. You know, when you're calling dinosaurs, Ralph. <laughs> ha. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, Lone Frog, my goodness. Getting a little carried away there. So, um, in any case, what was I, where was I going? Huh, I lost, I, I just jumped completely off of that train. <laughs> Holy smokes, Batman. Um, it was something to do with this. I know it was. Oh, yeah, man made things. You know, just like climate change. I'm sure that's man made. I'm, I'm, I would almost, I would be willing to say I'm 99% sure that climate change, you know, this quote unquote climate change that's going on, whatever it is, is man-made. It's not done by the masses. There are specific individuals, you know, those leeches that be, the, the uh, TLTB, those idiots and their underlings because you know the way that they avoid any kind of karmic repercussions is because they just put the thought out there I mean yeah they might have a little bit of bad karma built up but you know they don't get hammered like their little underlings get hammered because um they put they put the thought out there they put the orders out there it's the order followers that are earning that karmic retribution so you know climate change oh yeah you just got to look at that geoengineering going on in the skies every day you know basically the the tic-tac-toe that um yeah they have all kinds of wonderful names for it now that make it sound very scientific, but it's basically chemtrails. Chemtrails. So. Um, and that's true, Lone Frog. There, cancer treatment is, it is a treatment. It is not a cure. It is not anything to help you feel better. It is a treatment that they charge you quite literally in many cases an arm and a leg and sometimes a liver or a lung or a kidney or a brain or your life because yeah they're not there to make you better and they don't tell you they don't actually tell you that because you know they say that they have a five percent success rate when oh see you Vinny um you know, they say they have a 5% success rate after five years, you know, of people not having a cancer recurrence. They say that because they don't want you to realize that that means they have a 95% failure rate. Or people that have a recurrence of cancer pre five years, or people that just plain do not survive the cancer treatment it's a treatment not a therapy it is a treatment and it's a treat for them all the way to the bank so yeah i have zero faith in cancer doctors you know at least the ones that are ama certified and and all these oncologists that they want to pump all this poison into you because well the only way we'll be able to kill that nasty disease that's in you is to also kill your immune system sorry but it's a risk i'm willing to take thanks captain ass holio oh well 
Can we please identify the links? I is is um Vanna not doing that? Hmm. I don't know. In any case, let me go back to my do I want to go to my pocket? Wow, it's getting late enough. Yeah, I will. I'll go to my pocket. This is actually something that was um suggested by pocket. And uh, it's what happens uh, when you drink a gallon of water a day. Now, for me, I'm thinking I pee a lot. I spend most of the day in the bathroom. That's what would happen to me. But this says, I'm a person that hates drinking water. Where others enjoy a satisfying thirst quencher, I suffer through a barrage of sulfur, algae, swimming pools, and old metal pipes. Um... Most days, I avoid the issue entirely, subsisting on coffee, herbal tea, and the occasional lacrosse. What is that? In any case. But a few months ago, I began sus to suspect that chronic dehydration was the reason I continually felt tired and achy. So in an effort to compensate my way to a better life habit, I decided to slosh through a feat known across the internet as Water Gallon Challenge drinking a gallon of water per day for a month with the promise of glowing skin and a lot more energy. Now, given my taste sensitivities, I went the filtered route and brought with me a hoard of limes, cucumbers, and sea salt, plus an emergency stash of electrolyte mix and a journal to track my energy, yoga performance, and bathroom breaks. So here's how it went. Oh, this should be interesting. Day one. I'm peeing every 15 minutes. How in the hell am I supposed to get anything done? That would, yes, I, n yeah. Day two, I did not think it was physically possible to pee more than I did yesterday, 21 times. Yet, here we are, 23 times. Holy smokes, sweetheart. Additional instances of body rebellion included an afternoon of mild nausea and slight headache. Day four, I didn't feel like a 70-year-old woman when I got out of bed this morning, and I deep-cleaned my house with the stamina of an old-school Disney princess. So is water the magic cure for the generalized fatigue my doctor insists is not a real thing? Day 5. Yes, water is life. I no longer hobble into my day with my feet and spine curled up like dry leaves. I thought this experiment would be miserable, but I totally get it now. The, uh, though it be clear, water, even filtered water, still tastes disgusting without flavor enhancements, according to her. Now, I'm on well water, and it really is pretty, pretty nice tasting well water. Day 7. Can we talk about how good I am at yoga right now? My hamstrings are much more flexible and my back bends with ease. Even better, I have energy afterward and I'm not horribly sore the next day. Hmm, okay, I may have to up my water intake. Lots of trips to the bathroom. Day 10, a switch to water that's been unpurified by reverse osmosis plus carbon polishing and UV sterilization has proved revelatory. It's fully palatable and delicately sweet, without a hint of chlorine. I'm now the proud owner of a refillable three-gallon jug. Cool! Day 14. I crave water first thing in the morning instead of coffee. I don't recognize myself anymore. Day 19. The peeing has decreased to 10 times per day, and I'm still acutely aware of how much water I'm flushing down the toilet, so I've donated $30 to charity. Um, water, which funds clean, or to the charity, water, which funds clean water projects in 26 countries. Okay. Excuse me. Day 24, my massage therapist confirms that my muscles and fascia are noticeably looser. She's shocked to learn that before this, in the two plus years she's been trying to fix my body, I had been drinking barely any water. Day 32. Oops, the month is over and I didn't even notice. Hydration is routine and I'm loving it. Am I going to keep guzzling 128 ounces every day? 
Not unless I'm sweating buckets, but you better believe I'll keep sipping on glorious, unpurified water like my well-being depends on it. Now for the fluid dynamics, Nicole Lund, who is a nutritionist at the New York University Langan Sports Performance Center, explains the basics of hydration. Proper hydration means 85 ounces of water a day from food and beverages plus more to replenish what you lose when exercising. That's roughly 4 ounces of water for every quarter pound of weight lost during your workout. Now, uh, psychologically, or the psychological changes occur even in the early stages of dehydration, including decreased blood volume and less oxygen delivered to working tissues, and these changes make it harder to sweat, which will increase body temperature and heart rate and make you feel more, more fatigued during exercise. Now, frequent trips to the restroom are normal with increased water intake, Lund says. As with anything else that you change drastically, your body needs time to adjust if you start drinking a lot more. But the bottom line is, we all wake up slightly dehydrated. The easiest change you can make is to have a big glass of water first thing in the morning. So, the, and there are also some questions and answers that you can, or yeah. It was originally posted, oh, on Outside and was published January 23rd of 2019. So, there you go. I hope this will post over there good. I hope it will. And I do like drinking water. I don't drink that much water. Not by any Oh, there you go. It did work. Yay! I don't drink that much by any stretch of the imagination, but I do I do drink quite a bit of water. And I do drink about half a pot of coffee, minimum, a day. So, but I don't do soda. So, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other. And when it's really, really hot outside, I will do like green tea, um, you know, or some kind of herbal tea just to do a little flavor boost in my wada wada. Although I have been adding like uh, sliced up lime or orange or lemon or um, apples or pineapple, you know, something like that, just adding that to my drinking water as well. Just a nice little kick, little flavor without all the sugar. Speaking of which, I needed a little swig. So let me go check out the pig real quick here. Over here on PIGazette.com where Hambo and Porcus reign supreme and probably order supreme pizza along with their adult beverages quite often, those two wild and crazy guys. The word for the day over on PIGazette.com is love. It is a noun. It's a temporary insanity curable by marriage or by removal of the patient from the influences under which he in incurred the disorder. The source is Ambrose Bierce's Devil's Dictionary. Ah, thanks Ambrose. In the quotable quotes section, if you imagine Joe's record, he has generally gone along to get along throughout his 50 years as a career politician. Joe Biden not only lacks a brain, he lacks courage, integrity, and foresight as well. Even by the faulty leftist environmentalist wacko standards that he now claims to embrace. That's Dr. Hurd on Gropin' Joe. Gropin' Joe. I just call him Creepy Joe. Creepy Uncle Joe, because he's just freaking creepy. That's all there is to it. So, oh, in their tasty tidbits, they have an actual customer review from a man on Amazon.co.uk after using Veet hair removal cream for men. <laughs> Should I go there? I think I will. Simply because just because. Because of the wonderful things he does. La 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 la. 
Okay, so after having been told my danglies looked like an elderly Rastafarian, I decided to take the plunge and buy some of this to, um, as previous shaving attempts had only been mildly successful and nearly put my back out trying to reach the more difficult bits. Now, being a bit of a romantic, I thought I would do the deed on the missus's birthday as a bit of a treat. I ordered it well in advance, and working on the North Sea, I considered myself a bit above some of the characters writing the previous reviews and wrote them off as soft office types. Oh, my fellow sufferers, how wrong I was. I waited until the other half was tucked up in bed, and after giving some vague hints about a special surprise, I went down to the bathroom. Initially, all went well, and I applied the gel and stood waiting for something to happen. It didn't, or I didn't have long to wait. What was that? Oh. Oh, Bill Nye. Oh, he is such a gomer butt. You guys do realize that he was, he was like an engineer at Boeing, I think, and he was going out, um on open mic nights trying to be a stand-up comedian and that's when he got discovered to be Bill Nye the sky the science guy seriously look it up unless I'm wrong and then if I am well you, it's not the first time and I'm sure it won't be the last but yeah <laughs> yeah science guy my dying <clears throat> in any case back to this lovely little review so, I waited until the other half was tucked up in bed, and after giving some vague hints about a special surprise, I went down to the bathroom. Initially, all went well, and I applied the gel and stood waiting for something to happen. I didn't have long to wait. At first, there was a gentle warmth, which in a matter of seconds was quickly replaced by an intense burning and a feeling I can only describe as like being given a barbed wire wedgie by two people intent on hitting the ceiling with my head. Religion hadn't featured much in my life until that night, but I suddenly became willing to convert to any religion to stop the violent burning around the turd tunnel <laughs> and what seemed like the destruction of the meat and the two veg. Mmm... Struggling not to bite through my bottom lip, I tried to wash off the gel in the sink and only succeeded in blocking the plug hole in the mat of hair. Though that, or through a haze of tears, I struggled out of the bathroom, across the hall, into the kitchen. By this time, walking was not really possible, and I crawled the final yard to the fridge in the hope of some form of cold relief. I yanked the freezer drawer out and found a tub of ice cream tow the lid off and position it under me. The relief was fantastic, but only temporary, as it melted fairly quickly, and the fiery stabbing returned. Due to the shape of the ice cream tub, I hadn't managed to give the starfish any treatment, and I groped around in the drawer for something else, as I was sure my vision was going to fail fairly soon. Well, I grabbed a bag of what I later found out was frozen sprouts and tore it open, trying to be quiet as I did so. I took a handful of them and tried in vain to clench some between the cheeks of my arse. Now, this was not doing the trick, as some of the gel had found its way up the chutney channel. <laughs> I did good till now. <laughs> And it felt like the space shuttle was running. <laughs> it was running its engines behind me. Dude, he got a rocket chair. Cool. Or not. Now, this was probably, hopefully, the only time in my life that I was going to wish that there was a gay snowman in the kitchen, which should give you some idea of the depths I was willing to sink to in order to ease the pain. A gay snowman. You know, I always wondered about Frosty. <laughs> I'm thinking of, I'm, yeah, Gary L., I'm thinking, yeah, blowtorch, yeah, mm, mm-hmm. Yeah, may as well have just tased himself in the groin and gotten it over with. In any case, 
Mm, ouch. Now, the only solution my pain-crazed mind could come up with was to gently ease one of the sprouts where, <laughs> where no veg had gone before. <laughs> oh, God. Unfortunately, alerted by the strange grunts coming from the kitchen, the other half chose that moment to come and investigate and was greeted by the sight of me... <laughs> Arse in the air, strawberry ice cream dripping from my <laughs> bell end, pushing a sprout out of my arse <laughs> while muttering, Oh, ah, that feels good. <laughs> oh, God. Understandably, this was a shock to her, and she let out a scream, and as I hadn't heard her, or come, <laughs> come in, it caused an involuntary spasm of shock in myself, which resulted in, <laughs> which resulted in the sprout being ejected at <laughs> quite some speed <laughs> in her direction. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> my cheeks hurt. <laughs> Now, <laughs> I can understand that, <laughs> okay, I can understand that having a sprout fired against your leg at 11 at night in the kitchen <laughs> probably wasn't the special surprise she was expecting. And having to explain to the kids the next day what, <laughs> what the strange hollow in the ice cream was didn't improve my status. So, to sum it up, Veet removes hair, <laughs> dignity, <laughs> and self-respect. So, <clears throat> oh my <coughs> lord. Oh, dude, seriously. Huh, I, mm, I feel sorry for you, but thank you for the giggle. Anonymous dude from... Amazon.co.uk <laughs> Oh, God. Oh. Finally, this date in history, the 22nd of May, 1979, Dan White's Twinkie defense saves him from a murder conviction and gets him off with a manslaughter wrist slap, setting off an excuse abuse deluge, which, yeah... Yeah, and the excuses have just been getting worse and worse. And lastly, this date in history, the 22nd of May, 1990. Easily the most imaginative final episode in Boob Tube series history. The incomparable Newhart sets the bar impossibly high for memorable departures. And I do actually remember watching that one. I actually remember watching that one. And yeah, I like that. Of course, I like Newhart with, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. Oh, once the older generation. Oh, is that what Bill Nye says? Ah, hmm. <laughs> Frosty is pure as the driven snow. Uh, you do realize that snow's been driven on. It's not real pure. <clears throat> Just putting that out there. Oh, well. Oh, my goodness. Uh, my cheeks hurt. <laughs> okay, I'm catching up on the chat over here. And I see that someone said there's a lot of fluoride in tea. And actually, um, Grim... That, um, was that Grim that said that? Let me see. Let me scroll. I, ju I read it and now it's gone. What the hell? What the hell? Um, dun dun dun. You know, making, from what I understand, it's considered tea if it's a light, light colored beverage. I have people tell me that the fruit juice I'm making is tea. Although it's not really juice, it's just fruit infused. Oh, yeah, there it is. It was grimy. Um, 
but I'm I'm doing some dandelion leaves and some dandelion flowers, and I'm going to make me some dandelion tea as well. My sister-in-law made some last year, and she said it really was pretty good. But I have to pick the dandelions outside the fence for that because my dogs pee all over inside the fence, and I really don't want to drink tea made of dandelions that were peed on by the dogs. So kind of like when I go out and pick dandelions and dandelion leaves and clover flowers and leaves for Bibi for her little nature treat. Um, I do so outside the fence because I'm sure the bunny doesn't want to eat fresh veggies from the yard that have been peed on by a dog. You know, it's just that whole, it's got a bit of a wang to it that just really doesn't sound right. So, <clears throat> just saying. In any case, um, let's see. For those people to, oh, going to have to wait for those people to age out. Well, <laughs> What a lovely person. What a lovely person. I have to wait for him to age out. Yeah. I'll age you out, you piece of dog do. Okay. You know what? I haven't been to UPI in a long time. Let's just go check them out real quick. Shall we? In their odd news, no less. Um... No, thanks. I do not want to get... Uh, oh, let's see. It's gone to the animals, apparently. Because there is a, a resident that finds a crocodile lurking on their kitchen floor. Then there's a fox that's rescued from a basement in New Jersey. And then a bold badger that repeatedly raids a British woman's kitchen. And then bears climb through a vacationer's car window in Tennessee. Holy smokes! And if that's not bad enough, a big screen TV was fished out of a storm drain in Houston. Hmm. Yes. Oh. Thank you, Grim. Thank you. You know, I wonder how much of that uh, has to do with the water that it's grown with. Because like with anything, you know, if you buy, if you buy quote unquote organic food, which trust me, a lot of that crap is just to charge you a little bit more. In any case, um, you, you really have to be concerned about what the, the water is used to grow whatever produce you are purchasing or teas or whatever. Because in the United States, fluoride's everywhere. It really is. And, you know, just because we're pretty much saturated with it. Um, thank you very little, all you Captain Assholios that started that little thing. But, um... Yeah, so it doesn't surprise me that there's a high um, fluoride content in teas, uh, whether it's natural or not. Um, huh. So let's see. Okay, I'm just going to read this real quick. Thanks, Graham. Um, from deliciably.com um, As the controversy swells regarding fluoride in drinking water, it's important to look at our diet to minimize other sources of fluoride. For some tea, uh, to some tea leaves, fluoride content is high, and the type of tea and quality of the tea, de however, determine the level of fluoride present. So, making a healthier choice in tea will both uh, minimize fluoride intake and maximize overall, overall health benefits. So, um, the potential dangers of fluoride is that it's a neurotoxin. Period. So, huh. Thank you, Grim, for that. Very interesting. I'm going to go back to the odd stuff, though. Oh, now this is truly odd. This is truly odd. We got to do this one. This is uh, from UPI.com from today. Alligator found relaxing on inflatable gator pool toy. 
Apparently, a Georgia family vacationing in Florida captured photos of an unusual scene. An alligator lounging on an inflatable gator in their rental home's pool. David Jacobs said that he and his family were staying at the Airbnb in South Miami and they first spotted the alligator taking an interest in their family dog on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Now, Jacobs said that the family was able to keep the two animals separated, but an even stranger gator encounter was in store for them on Sunday when they found the alligator lounging atop an inflatable alligator floating in the home's backyard pool. My daughter, who's 14, was like, Dad, this is so meta. And Jacobs said his wife contacted the Airbnb's owners, who called a wildlife trapper and relocated the reptile. We have gators in Georgia, but they're just in areas that are not as populated, like some swamp where no one lives. But in Florida, they're just in your neighborhoods. And that, and there is a little video here. So, yeah, go figure. Gator going, checking out the floaty gator. It's a falsy, hun. It's a falsy. Oh, yeah, well, you know, and that's one of those things. Um, let's see. Yeah, and Assad is gassing his own people. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Seriously, would he be that stupid? I don't think that man is that stupid, but, you know, that's just me. <clears throat> and Grimmy said that tea sucks up the nat natural fluoride from the soil. And then you add all the other fun fluoride from, yeah. Yeah. In any case. Um. Oh, you're down... <laughs> <laughs> getting your neurotoxins from western omelets there you go lone frog that's the way to do it oh wow look at the time dang see when i brain fart all night long it just goes really really fast in any case y'all been listening to grammy's rocket chair here on real liberty media.com channel 10 also on the rlm spreaker channel the rlm tune in radio station the rlm internet radio station later to be on the rlm soundcloud and iHeartRadio and youtube and bit shoot all over the place in other words just so you know so I will be back on Friday, the real Friday, for the Freaker Friday edition of the Rocket Chair. And uh, be sure to check back, because tomorrow, let's see, uh, Flasher Rooney, is he doing 20% off at 2 o'clock? I don't have the schedule pulled up. So, I think Flash is on at 2 o'clock. And Vinny, at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, is uh, doing the Ponder Gander on Friday, which kind of kicks off the Freaker Friday festivities. But until then, y'all have an absolutely amazing sham wow, amazing rest of your evening. And I will catch you off and on until Friday because, yeah, kind of busy. Unless it's raining, I'm kind of busy. So until then, please remember, I truly do appreciate you putting up with me. And I really do Love you all and wish you all enough. Good night.